Welcome to Victory Christian Center. You're about to hear from our senior pastor, Pastor Stefan Schlugel, as he brings a message on a Sunday service. Romans chapter 8, verse 26, we begin to speak about prayer from this passage of Scripture, where it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And we say that the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. He helps our limitations. Uh, and what are our limitations? The limitations are, amongst other things, that we do not know how to pray for in certain situations. You're standing before some of these things like how do you pray and after a while you've prayed in English you run out of words uh, well then that's where praying in the spirit comes in and that's a uh, reference uh, to that right here the Holy Spirit makes inter intercession and, and groanings for us um, uh, and, and also through us we say that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us uh, and he's the one that gives us the ability to speak in tongues uh, and to even groan in the spirit which is part of that whole intercession aspect uh, that some of you are, are familiar with and used to. Uh, and it's a little bit like, you know, we've said that we're carrying a burden. I'm really burdened for these nations right, right now. We, it's election time. It, you know, things can go this way. Things can go that way. And we are praying. And uh, one thing that I really want to encourage you, friends, is that in the last election, three years ago, we had a reasonably good outcome in the elections. And it seems to me that that's probably where some of us dropped the ball. We didn't care carry on praying, because the election is one thing, but when they stitch up a government and do their, their back uh, room horse trading and their talks, you give me this and I'll give you that, and they stitch up a coalition, and we ended up with this disaster that we've had for the last three years, and now the fruit is right before our very eyes. So uh, don't be too perturbed by the elections alone, the outcome and the announcements are being made on Friday. Saturday, I should say, evening in a couple of weeks' time, but we will continue to pray because it's in the, in the coalition discussion that things can go right and they can go wrong. Is everybody all right with that? Okay. Praise God. So, um, point number one, and again, uh, it's right in your outline there, and for all those that are watching via our YouTube channel, there should be a link right below your screen there where you're able to open up the outline uh, or otherwise download it and, uh, and so forth. Um, so point number one, when I pray in, tongue, in tongues, my spirit prays. When I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. These are the words of Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and specifically in verse 14. He says, if I pray in a tongue, he says, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Um, I would like to suggest that the gift of tongues, speaking in tongues, which is what we receive when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, that gift of speaking in tongues is hugely underrated and hugely underused as far as the facility is concerned that God has given to us uh, through the Holy Spirit. Um, you get many Christians, many tongue-talking believers that do not talk in tongues much because mostly they do not understand the benefits of this powerful gift. Um, many Christians do not speak in tongues at all because of a misunderstanding of, of one verse of Scripture that I want to cover today. And that verse of Scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30. Uh, so I want to span, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 speaks about the nine gifts of the Spirit of which the gift of speaking in tongues is part of. Uh, and then we're going to swing over into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where Paul speaks about speaking in tongues versus prophesying. And he kind of contrasts those two uh, and, and so forth. And I'm hoping that I'm able to get some understanding across to some of you to usher you into a greater use of this gift because uh, your life will be better and together we are more effective interceding for our nation because my gosh our nation needs intercession that song that we sang this morning again it's all part of that lord heal our land our, ha our land needs healing and speaking in tongues is all part of that process um just to go right back to basics, and gosh uh, we, pastor Vanessa and i've so appreciated the teachings of kenneth hagen who has 
much taught on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, much taught on, the, on, on tongues as a gift and the various applications of it. And, uh, and uh, it's interesting, but a number of years ago, we had a Bible college student from another country come uh, to our nation and they came to visit us and they uh, wanted to interview Pastor Vanessa and myself uh, and uh, talked about, you know, that they wanted to go into ministry and what's important and what do you need to do and so forth. And, uh, and they said, how long have you been in ministry? And at that stage, uh, uh, I suppose we would have been in ministry about 26, 27 years, something like that. And when I said that, I said, wow, that's a long time. How did you last so long? You know, because they reckon that anybody that gets past seven years of full-time ministry is considered a veteran. All right, yeah, that's amazing. And they said, how did you do that? And I responded by saying, kutarabasia rabasanda, sikiri basaya rabahanda rabasanda. You pray in the spirit a lot. All right, you pray in tongues and build yourself up. And, uh, and uh, there is a facility there, like, I don't know about you, but boy, uh, I, I need to pray in tongues a lot, every day, a lot, in order for me to stay abreast with the responsibilities that God's given me, in order to not, not fall prey to the attacks of the devil, to not be deceived in these last days. Praying in the Spirit is very much a feature uh, in my life, and I know it is in the lives of many of you. It's underrated, um, and it's not understood it's not used enough. Let's change that. All right. There are two basic and distinct applications of tongues. Letter A, and it's in your outline. There is letter A, the gift of tongues for personal edification. Edification means building up, that you build yourself up. Um, and this is your personal prayer language that you re have received at the baptism with the Holy Spirit. All right. And then the second application is that there is the gift of tongues for public utterance. Uh, and I'm sorry for using these old-fashioned words, utterance. It basically means speaking. All right. As I said, this is how we've been taught. Uh, this is how I still teach it because once you learn the word, you, you're into it. All right. Um, so this uh, second uh, application is uh, where somebody uh, functions in the gift of tongues to give a public message in tongues, as we see it, and it needs to be together with the gift of interpretation. So you've got tongues and interpretation flowing together. That's the second application. So again, the first application is where you pray in tongues for your own personal edification. The second one is uh, where you function in uh, giving a message in tongues uh, in some church setting somewhere where other believers are around. And where either yourself or somebody else brings the interpretation. The first one is a private and personal edification, the other is a public uh, uh, function, and it is for other people's edification. One is a believer speaking in tongues, speaking to God directly, and the other is God speaking through a believer to a group of people. One is a message from our, from our heart going up to God, and the other one is God sending a message down through a believer who brings a message in tongues and somebody does an interpretation. So one's up, the other one's down. These are two distinct functions. And if you don't understand this, the scriptures that you can read in the New Testament about speaking in tongues, you will be confused because, as I say, these two things are very, very important. They're very distinct functions. So 1 Corinthians chapter four, uh, 14, verse 4, and just to put some scripture context to what we're discussing here, in verse 4 it says, He who speaks in a tongue, the Amplified Translation, it calls it a strange tongue. Some translations call it an unknown tongue because it is unknown to the speaker. Uh, he says, He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. I don't know about you, but I need a whole lot of improving and a whole lot of edifying. I need a whole lot of building up. One translation says, he strengthens himself. Um, and uh, as I said, I need a whole lot of improving. I need a whole lot of strengthening. I need a whole lot of building up. How do I do that? Well, part of it is that I speak in tongues a lot. All right. Jude verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up. On your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. And praying in the Spirit is just another term for praying in tongues. All right? 
So, so that's our function here in terms of our personal prayer language that we have received when we were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 5, there's another verse here, two verses, uh, one verse, two sentences rather, that speaks about the public gift of bringing a message in tongues and somebody bringing an interpretation. And here Paul uh, is instructing the believers in the city of Corinth, in the church in Corinth, because they were misusing the gifts. And praise God, in a sense, uh, that that was happening because Paul wrote a letter to them to teach them about the proper use of the gifts and instruct them. And we got that same instruction for us today. So praise God for the letter. Praise God for the word of the Lord so that we know how to function in these gifts. Verse 5. Verse 5. Is that what it is? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5. Now, I want you all to speak in tongues but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. All right, so here Paul is speaking about the public use of the gift of speaking in tongues where somebody out aloud gives a message in tongues that could last for, for all I know from between 5, 10 seconds to 20, 30 seconds. Uh, and then somebody comes in and brings an interpretation of that message that was just given. And Paul is speaking about that very uh, situation right here. Now, uh, let us see in, in your outline, it says, every believer can and should speak in tongues for personal edification. And that's the, the type A that we discussed earlier on. And then letter D, not every believer will operate in the public gift of tongues for the church's edification. All right. Everybody can pray in tongues for their own personal edification, but not everybody will function in one of those nine gifts of the Spirit that Paul lists in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which is that public gift of speaking in tongues bringing a message in tongues that must have interpretation with it. Otherwise, Paul says, keep silent. And what the Corinthian believers used to do, uh, evidently they used to come together and one after the other, they jump up in their church meetings and they bring a message in tongues and sit back down again and nobody do interpretation and somebody else bring a message in tongues and sit back down again. And Paul says, that's not how it works. It says that particular use of the gift he says, uh, it's not to be used like that. He says, there must be an interpretation. Either the person that brought the message in tongues needs to give the interpretation or wait until somebody else jumps in and uh, brings an interpretation. And as we'll see a little bit later on, Paul the Apostle, he, said, uh, he says, I praise God that I pray in tongues more than you all. But he says, but in the church, I'd rather speak five words in my understanding, then you speak 10,000 words in tongues, which you can't understand, unless, of course, there were an interpretation. So you see what's happening here. And as I say, you'd be amazed about the confusion around this issue uh, in, the, in the church world, uh, including the Pentecostal church world, charismatic people who don't fully understand the difference between the two, and therefore kind of do not speak in tongues and do not use the facility sufficiently, but, but we need it. Every believer needs the baptism with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus spoke to his disciples after his crucifixion, after his resurrection, before he ascended to heaven, he says, he says, do not leave Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he was speaking about the Holy Spirit. He says, don't leave Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere until you've been empowered. And so as soon as a, a person gets born again, they're a young believer, they've had the new birth, they now need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a secondary experience in order to empower them for the Christian life. And tragically, many Christians in the church world, they're thoroughly born again, they're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they therefore are unable to speak in tongues, because speaking in tongues comes when you receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We teach that in our foundation classes. In fact, we'll be covering that this afternoon um, at 4 o'clock. A number of you are booked into that course, so you're getting a bit of a double whammy today. Uh, and for any of you that are like suddenly interested, you want to come and join us, you're most welcome. All right. Uh, we open doors and we encourage you to, to, to get the fullness of what we're discussing here today. Because, friends, in these last days, it's become more important than ever to be baptized with the Holy Spirit 
And, uh, and as I will be pointing out later on, that we are now in supernatural territory. We need to live our life supernaturally. Natural strength and natural wisdom will not get us by in these last days. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to pray. We need to build ourselves up. And you know, when Paul says, I pray in tongues more than you all, Paul the Apostle carried more revelation concerning the church and concerning God's purpose and so forth than any other believer alive at that time. How do you get revelation? Speak in tongues a lot. In the process of you speaking, praying in tongues, you're building yourself up spiritually and your spirit prays. And, and you know, many people are very soul driven. They're very driven out of their minds, but God wants us to be driven out of our spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Uh, Romans chapter 8 tells us. Praise God. Again, put some scriptural context to it in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. We looked at that last week. We keep on coming back because this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. That's why as believers, amongst other things, we are Pentecostal believers. And what makes us Pentecostal is that we believe in what happened on the day of Pentecost when God put out His Spirit according to His promise in the book of Joel and that we can participate in the baptism of the Holy Spirit even today, uh, even though the initial outpouring took place 2,000 years ago. There have been subsequent and outpourings. And we are praying for the latter rain outpouring of the Spirit to take place. And in parts of the world, it's already happening. And we need more of it in New Zealand. All right. Hallelujah. Acts 2 verse 4. And they were all filled. Circle the word all. It's already underlined, but circle it. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. There were 120 believers in the upper room and every single one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. You would think, as, if, as some people are saying that tongues is only for certain ones and not for others, you would think if that were true, it's not, but if it were true that out of those 120 believers, say eight of them might have been filled uh, with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and 40 did not speak. But they all spoke with tongues. They all received the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, the old-time Pentecostal, and some of you recognize the phrases. They, they had those phrases and those sayings. Uh, they would say, you know, are you born again? Say, yeah, thoroughly born again, receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Then they would say, are you, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Because tongues is the evidence that we have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, of course, uh, again, there's a whole argument going around all of that in, in, in the church world. People say, oh, you can't be filled without speaking in tongues. I say, not properly. Not properly. The New Testament knows no baptism with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues. Okay. Everybody all right this morning? Yeah. I just want to encourage you this morning. And... Um, and I'm hoping that uh, it'll usher you into a greater use of the gifts. And if in the process I can also kind of share some of our burdens concerning our nation that we are praying more, we can bring about a shift. We, we can bring about a shift. That's what I'm saying. We're not just praying right up to the election. We're praying beyond that. Because there's stuff going on in our nation, as I say, we've never been here before. What's before us, it's, 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 never, been, it's never been as it is right now. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30, and here's that scripture um, that many people misunderstand. Paul says, do all have, uh, let me start again. He says, all do not have the gifts of healings, do they? And the answer is no. And then he goes on to say, all do not speak in tongues, do they? And the answer is no with reference to the public utterance gift of speaking in tongues. All do not interpret, do they? No. Not every believer walks and functions in that public gift. But every believer should function in the gift of speaking in tongues, which is a personal, private prayer language to communicate with God directly out of their spirit and to be able to build themselves up. So again, when Paul says to all speak in tongues, uh, or he said all do not speak in tongues, do they? He was specifically referring to the gift of tongues for public utterance, which is the second type 
the second application that we discussed before. And he was definitely not referring to the gift of tongues for personal edification. All right. As I said, that's, uh, that's what makes us Pentecostal believers. Some people say, well, you know, we're charismatic believers. Pentecostal, charismatic, the outworking is the same. We believe in the, in the, in the charisma. We believe in the, in the charism. We believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit that it is for us. The Holy Spirit is for us today. And when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability uh, to speak in tongues. And interesting, too, in fact, that this afternoon we'll cover it from another angle and we'll demonstrate some of those things and then we'll pray for people that are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's why we want everybody coming through those courses. It is tragic that people sit in churches year after year after year not able to speak in tongues because it's never come up. It's never been brought about. Uh, you know, like we, It's been a while that we have taught around these things, uh, but we have it in our spiritual growth track, so somewhere you'll come across it. All right. It's interesting that you, you get all sorts of variations. You get things like this, uh, where somebody says, uh, if you ask them, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Uh, uh, and they'd say, yes. they say, okay, when did you speak in tongues last time? Oh, about seven years ago when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And this is true. You, you, you get people like that. And here's what happens. When they step into the setting where they receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, uh, more often than not, it's in some meeting somewhere where the presence of God is strong. There's a powerful anointing there. There is a, and they feel, they feel a sense of euphoria almost, and they're so excited. And in that moment, they start speaking in tongues. And wow, how wonderful is that? And, and what's brought it on is that presence, that, that thing, somebody laying hands on them, uh, and then they speak in tongues. And after a while, they stop. And then they walk away from there. They never get the same feeling that they had before. And they never speak in tongues again because they're waiting for the feeling before they speak in tongues. But friend, it's like putting the, harp, the cart before the horse. It's like, you know, like the, the tail wagging the dog. It's like you speak in tongues long enough, you get the feeling. All right. But we don't walk by feelings. Praise God when we sense the presence of God. It's wonderful. We love it. But you just, you just, you know, kick into it. And start the engine and get your spirit praying uh, at any moment. More is better than less. Praying boldly and strongly is better than praying quietly. But if praying quietly is what's called for, depending on the setting that you're in, it's wonderful. It's fantastic. All right. Here it is. First Corinthians. No, let me back up. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. We quoted it before, but here it is. Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you or all of you put together. <laughs> Paul was a tongue talker. All right. He spoke in tongues a lot. He had a lot of revelation. He had a lot coming against him, but he prevailed through it and speaking in tongues was part of that facility to help him to be able to battle his way through situations, through opposition, through persecution, through just all sorts of situations. Paul just speaking in tongues. He says, I speak in tongues more than you all. He wasn't like trying to put them down, but he's just trying to teach them. And then later on, when he finishes the chapter, he says, he says encourage people to prophesy and do not forbid uh, people speaking in tongues, but it needs to be done in the right setting and in a, the right application. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, in the Living Bible, same verse, different uh, translation. I thank God that I speak in tongues privately more than any of the rest of you. And he is making reference to that personal prayer language that Paul uses to communicate from his own spirit directly to God uh, rather than the other way around where God gives a message through somebody to bring a public message to the people. So Paul differentiates between those two, and the Living Bible has picked up that aspect of it in their translation. Very important that we understand the difference between the two, uh, otherwise we will get confused. 
We now got uh, tragic, tragic, tragic. We get now ministers coming through seminaries in different parts around the world, uh, uh, not baptized with the Holy Spirit, and some of, some of the ones that are in Pentecostal churches, tongues is hardly ever mentioned, uh, and then the people, they, they're forbidden, they, they, people can't speak publicly uh, in, in tongues and so forth. It's like, what is all of that? It's a misunderstanding. And yes, uh, we can overwork things in terms of uh, uh, an entirely wrong application of speaking in tongues uh, publicly to kind of, you know, if somebody were to jump to their feet and shout a message in tongues uh, and then sit back down again, uh, and then I brought a public message, and that must be together with an interpretation. They sit back down, and if nobody brings an interpretation, then it, it, it's a waste of time. It doesn't do what it is supposed to do. All right, and of course, we haven't got time to swing into all the details, but with the nine gifts uh, of the Spirit that Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, nine gifts, one of those is prophecy, and uh, the prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. When we prophesy people, we, we, we build them up, we, we comfort them, we, bring, we exhort them, we encourage them. But when we bring a message in tongues together with interpretation, it has the same effect as is prophecy. That's why Paul contrasts uh, prophecy with tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, and he says, he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. Unless the one that speaks in tongues interprets so that everybody can get built up and then the two will be equal because the effects are the same. I know this is a, sort of getting into detail that in your average church service that wouldn't hardly happen. As I said, this is teaching uh, that people need to understand and they should understand it early in their Christianity so that they can move forward in, the, in that vein and function in that gift uh, in every respect and be able to build themselves up. And it's wonderful that we can prophesy to each other. But what if nobody comes and prophesies to you? Well, then what? Speak in tongues. You speak in tongues long enough, you build yourself up. Oh, everybody okay? Speaking in tongues. Kota rabasia rabasanda. Ele masia rabasanda. So, you know, like you, you start the engine running. It's, it's like that. Once I start the engine running, it's, it's, that's why Paul says, when I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays. When I start speaking in tongues, my spirit kicks in. And then it's like starting an engine. It's almost, I almost consciously have to turn it off. Otherwise, it'll just keep on running. And in the beginning, it's a bit of a struggle to get you into it. But once you're used to that, uh, it just becomes second nature. And then you walk past someone and say, what do you say? Oh, I'm just speaking in tongues. <laughs> See me driving down the road. I'm sitting in the car m myself and my mouth is moving. What am I doing? I'm speaking in tongues. The Bible says, make good use of your time. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Point number two, we are a three-part being. Specifically, Spirit, soul, and body. Because we're still teaching out of, uh, you know, when Paul says, when I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. What exactly does that mean? Well, we are a three-part being. And Paul speaks about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. He says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. As human beings, born again people specifically, our complete makeup is made up of number one, spirit, number two, soul, number three, body. And it's in that order. Spirit, soul, and body. Many people only start with the body, they get as far as the soul and they stop there. They don't recognize that there's a whole spiritual dynamic to human beings. And, and, you know, traditional church world has spoken about the soul over and over and over. Soul saved and this and it's all wonderful, but there is a spirit. And when we look at each other, all we see is each other's bodies until we look each other into the eyes because the eyes is the window into the soul and into the spirit. And here in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14, to pick it up again, Paul says, if I, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. My spirit prays. My spirit prays. And there's a function when we started out with the scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, where it says that the Holy Spirit prays, but he prays through us. And he prays specifically through our spirit. Because when we say we are filled with the Holy Spirit, 
And we cover that extensively in Bible college. But specifically, the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. And then you have a soul and you have a body as well. When I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. For me to become spiritually attuned, the best thing that I know to do, it's like, like it start speaking in tongues. It kicks my spirit into, into gear and gets my spirit up and running. It's like a motor. You turn this thing on, and ideally you never turn it off. And if it wants to turn off, you kick it back in, into it again and rev up the engine a little bit. You know, the Bible says that it is the spirit of man that sustains him in infirmity. When you've got a strong spirit, you can even go through sickness and disease and come out the other side and say, oh, I think I might have just had something, but I just, it just, my spirit just carried me through because the spirit sustains us. So God wants us to become spirit strong and perhaps not as strong in our soul. Our soul is reference to our mind, our will, and our emotions. Many people train their soul very well. They drive and they live their lives out of their mind. But God wants us to live our lives out of our spirit. What's Paul speaking about here? He says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is that? He's speaking about his understanding. He's speaking about his mind, which is part of the soul. He says, when I speak in tongues, he says, it's my spirit that prays, but my mind is unfruitful. My understanding is unfruitful. What is the understanding? It's that the part of us where we, where we pray in our known language, which to us here in New Zealand would be most likely New Zealand, uh, uh, what do you call it, English. Uh, uh, you know, if your mother tongue is, is Maori, is Samoan, whatever it is, you know, that you, you pray, when you pray in that, in that tongue, you're praying out of your understanding because it's a known language. But when you pray in tongues, you're praying out of your spirit. It bypasses your mind, and you can't mess it up with your mind. But this is the key. This is the trick. You know, the old days when Pastor Vanessa and I got, got born again, and some of you remember this, you know, they used to tell us and say, no, tongues is fantastic. You know, tongues is really good. You need to pray in tongues because the devil can't understand it. And, and that's exactly right. But actually, we're not just praying tongues because the devil can't understand it, but we pray in tongues because I can't mess it up with my mind. When I look at a situation complex, which is many situations, some things are simple and easy, some things are very complex and very, very, very difficult to understand that, that if I pray and if I have a wrong comprehension about the situation, I'm liable to pray a wrong prayer about this situation, and then I'm liable to not use the right type of prayer, and that's a whole other teaching all of its own, but if I pray in the Spirit, it'll fit every time, because the words that I'm speaking a Holy Spirit inspired that come directly out of my spirit and they go directly to God. The devil can't interfere with it and on its way out, my mind can't, can't interfere with it. And somebody said one day, I said, oh, I'm not sure about my tongues. Uh, um, uh, when I start, start speaking in tongues, you know, my mind wanders. Well, there you go. Paul says, my understanding is unfruitful. That's when I pray, pray in tongues and I pray about something specifically. My mind starts wandering. I switch back into English and I put direction on this thing and then I go back into tongues. And I switch back in English and make sure that I'm still on track and then I carry on praying. And I'm directing my tongues toward a specific situation, towards a particular person or a specific group of people. Of course, it, the prayer goes up, but the power goes down. Uh, and actually, I'm convinced that I speaking in tongues via changing the atmosphere. There are shafts of light uh, that are released. There's truth. The Bible says, you know, when, when we speak in, in, in the Spirit, we're releasing mysteries. One translation says secrets. Uh, I don't believe so much that they're secrets. See, a, a mystery is a, is a truth that has not yet been revealed. And when you speak in tongues, you are speaking mysteries, and if you speak in tongues long enough and you exercise all the other spiritual uh, exercises and dynamics, such as reading the Word, and suddenly you read the Word, and, oh, suddenly revelation starts flooding into your mind because you prayed it, and now you 
God opened the eyes of your understanding and it's affected your understanding. But Paul said, when I pray in tongues, my spirit prays and my understanding is unfruitful. Unfruitful means non-productive and even disengaged. When I start speaking in, 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 in tongues, uh, um, it, it's, it's like it disengages my mind. And, and that's a good thing. Sometimes the mind needs to get out of the way. <laughs> Sometimes those doors, they just need to take a back seat and let the Spirit get into, into the driver's seat of my life. And uh, speaking in tongues and steering towards a breakthrough that God has for every single one of us. So again, when we pray in tongues, our spirit prays, but our understanding is at that point unproductive and largely disengaged. And again, the understanding has to do with the mind, which is part of our soul. In other words, when we pray, we can either pray in English, which is our understanding which is part of the soul, or we can pray in tongues, which is praying out of our spirit. Both are necessary, both are important. So it's not one or the other. But if all you've done in recent times is pray out of your understanding, I'd encourage you, start praying out of your spirit. In your spirit, you know things that you don't know in your understanding. You know, the Pentecostals used to say that uh, they say, I know something in my Noah. And every one of us, we have a Noah on the inside. We have, a, we have a, an inner witness on the inside. Uh, what does John refer to in, in 1 John? Uh, he says that, he says, he says, you know all things. How do I know all things? I know it in my spirit. But it hasn't quite dawned on my mind yet. But as I pray in the spirit and continue to seek God and study the word, the truth will speak spill over into my mind and suddenly I got the revelation and suddenly I have the understanding. If there's anything else I need to do other than pray in the Spirit, now I have the revelation. Now I know what to do. Tongues is supernatural. It's a prayer language that you have not learned. It's a prayer language that you were given. Somebody said, can you teach me how to speak in tongues? No, it can't be taught. I can teach you how to receive tongues, but I can't, can't teach you tongues because tongues is words from the Holy Spirit. And it's supernatural. I had a discussion with someone recently about uh, our church, where we are, and what we do and, and who we are. And they've been to our church visiting, not part of our church, but visiting. And, uh, and the discussion came around the fact that we are very, very multicultural. You look around. I, I go away somewhere, and when I talk about our church, I call us the United Nations. You know, I really like the United Nations, like every tongue, every tribe, every nation. Okay, it's wonderful. But it wasn't like that in the early days when we first planted the church. And here's a quick story just to encourage you because we're talking about something supernatural. One day, uh, I sort of had a bit of a summary. And, you know, when I look at people, I don't see color. I don't see, I just, I just, I just see people. But one day it dawned on me, like, gosh, you know, we're just all a bit of a white, uh, white middle class sort of uh, type church. You know, what's going on? Uh, you look around Lower Hutt, Lower Hutt's very multicultural. Our region's very multicultural. Well, what's going on here? And I began to pray. And I began to pray. And I specifically remember the, the, the time when I prayed and the space that I was in when I prayed. And I began to pray. And, uh, and it bothered me that we were not a proper representation of what's in the community in our church bothered me. And so I'm praying, and I'm praying prolonged periods of time, and I'm praying. And, and next minute, I heard something come out of my mouth. It sounded like the Maori language. I thought, well, let's just go with the flow here and carry on praying. And so I began to pray, and somebody says, do you, do you speak Maori? I said, well, yes. <laughs> well, yes, I do. Uh, let me try some words on you. Hangi, <laughs> Hongi, Rotorua, Wainuyu Mata, I speak Maori, all right, but I, after a while, I soon ran out. Because, as I say, 
We didn't reach Maori people and other people by me trying to speak Maori. We reach people by speaking in tongues. Supernatural. We done it supernaturally. And the glory goes to God. And so I'm praying and I'm praying away and thought, well, this is interesting. I'm praying for a while and praying, praying until, you know, as Brother Hagen used to tell us, pray until you get a note of victory in your spirit, until you feel a sense of release. You know, I was burdened. We are, we are burdened with things. We're carrying a burden for the nation, a burden for the church, a burden for whoever, whatever. And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. And after a while, we're sensing a breakthrough. And then you feel a lift in your spirit. And when I felt that lift in my spirit, I stopped praying in tongues, which I thought sounded rather like the Maori language. Guys, I've heard Maori people speak. And, uh, and then, lo and behold, within a few weeks, a couple of months, there's people started to walk in from different colors and different tribes and different people. And so, well, there you go. There you go. God's done a supernatural thing. Because people say, how did you, how do you reach all of these people? We say, so we pray in tongues. You know, that was particularly interesting because in that particular setting, they said, look, we need to, we need to learn Maori so we can reach Maori people. I said, well, that's funny. I said, you have churches around the place that have been trying to learn Maori for the last 10 years to try to reach Maori, and they still haven't reached Maori. Because that is a natural answer out of a soul. It's not a spiritual answer to a particular situation. And I'm not against people learning Maori. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for it. We're just at Maori language. We can, I'm all for it. But, but don't push me into it. If I don't, if, I'm, I'm happy with my repertoire of Maori birds. I'm comfortable with that. All right, because if I have to speak Maori to reach Maori people, do I now have to learn Samoan? Do I have to learn Chinese? Do I have to learn Filipino language? You see where we're going with this. It's supernatural. And I promise you, you pick up a burden and you pray in tongues long enough, the breakthrough will come no matter what it is. Because you're praying a perfect prayer that is uncontaminated by the thoughts of your own mind it can't be interfered with by the devil as it goes up and God hears your prayer because the Holy Spirit inspired words and God releases the power into the situation that you are praying for. First Corinthians 14 verse 15. What is the conclusion then? Paul speaking, talking to the Corinthian church that were misusing the gifts he um, says, what's the conclusion then? Well, he says, I will pray with the Spirit. That's tongues. And I will also pray with the understanding. That for us is English. For them, it would have been perhaps Greek. He says, I will sing with the Spirit. And I will also sing with the understanding. When I pray for somebody to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, I almost always, almost always get them to sing once they've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and they're speaking in tongues. Say, okay, let's stop right now. I say, now for the next 30 seconds, I want, I want us to sing together. Let you and I sing in tongues together. I want him to experience what that sounds like and what that feels like so that they can swing in and out. As Paul says, I pray in the understanding and I pray in the Spirit. I sing in, in, in tongues and I sing in, in the Spirit. And what we've done this morning with the songs that we sang, uh, they're, they're, they're singing with our understanding, but then in between and, and at the end we sing in tongues because it's part of our worship to God. And, and, then, uh, and then I do stop, start, stop, start uh, with them. Because what I'm trying to teach them is, uh, don't you know, like it's not about the feeling that you've got right now that you're able to speak in tongues. It's a, it's a facility that you have, re you, you have received that you can turn on and you can turn off at will. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 also says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. We, we control what happens when we speak in tongues and when we not speak in tongues. So I get him to turn it off and get him to turn it back on again. He says, now speak. So they speak. I says, now stop. Now sing. So they start singing. And I sing with them <laughs> to encourage them. And, and then stop. And then so, so that they learn that they're not waiting for a special feeling before they start speaking in tongues. They just turn the tap on. They just start that, that, that motor running and uh, away they go. So our understanding, that's the soul, 
it's subject to human interference. Particularly our own, we can mess up a prayer with our own mind by just ignorance, wrong understandings, misperceptions. Other people can mess it up by what they say. But our spirit is not subject to human interference. When we speak in tongues, it is 100%. The words are 100% Holy Spirit inspired. And of course, our born again human spirit is occupied uh, by the Holy Spirit. And when we speak in tongues, it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the words. My brother, my sister, I encourage you. Don't leave Jerusalem until you've been endured with power from on high. <laughs> don't leave this place today until you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. We will definitely pray for people this afternoon as part of our spiritual growth uh, classes, our training sessions. I usually don't let them out the door. I says, okay, how many of you are not baptized? Oh, don't let them out the door. I just lock the door. I'm just having fun with you. Okay, just having fun. But you need the Holy Spirit and you need the gift. And you say, I've got the Holy Spirit, but I can't speak in tongues. Then you haven't got the fullness. So we are, you and I, we are in supernatural territory. That's in reference to the spiritual climate over our nation. It's quite precarious. The political climate, it's not what it needs to be. The economic climate, we're in supernatural territory. The full pinch of, of what's coming economically has not fully kicked in yet. It's, it's begun, but there's going to be more economic fallout. You and I, we need to pray in the Spirit, so we're not going to be part of the mess that's coming. And, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that we're not losing jobs, that we're not sort of uh, out, out, uh, forced out of the economy, that we continue, everything carries on for us because we're God's people. We are tithers. We are, we're praying supernaturally. And if a job needs to stop, then another one opens up very quickly. You know, God can reshuffle. I remember a number of years ago, my job stopped like suddenly. And I'm talking about, you know, being called into the office, say, sorry, we can't afford you anymore. Uh, we're going to give you two weeks pay. You're out the door. And I went home with a rather heavy heart and told my wife, and we just bought a house and we had mortgage payments up to here. And so we prayed together. And part of that was praying in tongues. And on Monday, I walked into a new job. How did that happen? Speaking in tongues. Supernatural. If one door closes, God opens another one. And don't let fear grip your heart. We don't operate by fear. We walk by faith, not by sight. So we're in supernatural territory. You won't get by in the natural, friend. We need to be in the spirit. The legal climate. Laws are being passed that are just... That just boggles the mind but what's going on you know they're they're talking about new zealand becoming a smoke-free country by 2025 and then they're legalizing dope smoking i mean how dumb can you get you know i need to say to the politicians we are not, we are the people we are not dumb and anyway it's not not about smoking it's like you know they come in with the edibles and then Hash cookies that are not made with butter, but with hash oil and stuff like that. Edibles, drinkables, vapables, just made up a new word, vapables. There will be shops up and down this country if this law comes in. And you know where they will be? They will be in the poorer communities and the lower socioeconomic areas. The big Mariana comes in and wants to get you addicted so that you can feed their company and their profits. What a disaster. And politicians, what a mess. You know, for years, I'm, I'm offended by this. For years, we've started citizens-initiated referendum and got signatures together, and none of them listened. Now they thrust this stupid thing on us. So you didn't want referendums before. Now, why, why are you thrusting that on us now? I'm offended by that. <laughs> but I'm still smiling. We've still got the victory. But let, friend, let me tell you, we have never been here before. We are not only in the days before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, what the Bible calls the last days, but in our days, we can very easily 
lose our liberty, our freedom of speech. And for us as the Christian church, our, our legal right to preach the gospel freely in our nation without being, you know, for fear of being locked up or with some stupid hate speech that they've been dangling around and over us and trying to soften the population. We don't want it. Let me tell you this. For the sake of freedom of speech, you can say anything you like to me. You can call me names. Uh, if that's what it takes in order for us to, to have freedom of speech, then so be it. You know, you look at some of these people the wrong way, they'll sucks and they fall apart and say, we need the Lord. These people are, you know, they hate us. Uh, stupidity. You know, suddenly you become a homophobic, you're a phobic this and a phobic that. You know, phobia, phobia is a fear. I'm not afraid of people. We love these people. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of, of you know, the, it's like hijacking the language to impress something on, on our nation that we don't need and that we don't want. And that ultimately leads people into bondage. But we are about liberty. So right now, and I close with this, we need less human-inspired prayers. We need more Holy Spirit-inspired prayers. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. We use tongues which is the Holy Spirit inspired prayer and words to pray and intercede for our nation. With our prayers, we are changing the climate over our nation. The spiritual climate. We are changing the political landscape. We are changing the government. With our prayers, we are bringing revival Amen. to the land. Thanks for watching Victory Christian Center. For more content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can subscribe to our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes or Google Podcasts. Check out our website at victory.net.nz. We'll see you again soon.